That is carnage. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Project Not So Slow. Previously on our channel, we took our Super Turbo OM606 swapped 190D drag car for some testing and it did awesome. We were surprised how well it handled uh, high speeds, the stability of it, and we were blown away by the power. But then it started making some noises, some unpleasant noises. So we took it home, we started digging into it, and what we found is a lot of metal shavings in the oil filter. That's a lot. So it's time to take out the engine and see what's going on. Oh. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Look at this. It looks like it's been eating itself. What? Uh, that is a lot of material. Let's see. Cylinder number six is destroyed. Might need a new rod. Look at this. Dude. Look at Oh my goodness, it's a big piece. What is this? Well, I can see that number six is like discolored. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Let's take off the cap. You can see that. that's how it's supposed to look like. That's not how it's supposed to look like. We're gonna take off that cap. Yeah, but I feel like it's worse than just that one. That's the main cap. That's the cap. We don't, we yeah, don't see. I know. I see the cap. That's that's. Push they the... like somehow overlapped each other. Oh, that is carnage! Why would it do that? It literally put it over itself. Yeah, they like oh, overlapped wow. each other. Yeah, kind of destroyed the crank. It's in a horrendous condition. Well, I hope you didn't install it that way somehow. No, no, of course not. Of course I didn't install it on, it, on itself. No, I put, obviously I put one in there and then one in the other side. There's no way that this could have happened for, those, for how long it knocked. You know what I'm saying? How fast, it, how little it knocked. Mm -hmm. Like There's no way that it happened that fast. Do you want to take off another cap to see? I do. I want to take out the next one. Huh? It's going to be brand new. Oh, clean. Trust. There's a video. There's two of them. All right, so we got the crank out. It's looking kind of sad. Yeah, uh, it's not good. There's some really large pitting in there. Seems like it is not savable. It does say uh, 603. I don't remember. I know I've read this before i just do not remember if these are identical to 603s like the cranks if it's the same exact thing so i'm going to go home and i'm going to look at all the part numbers and see i have multiple 603 cranks at home so i'm going to check it out see if i have a 603 crank that we can use and uh, yeah well, so what we got over here oh severe overheating on this uh, last yeah uh, it's rod. it's be beautifully colorful and the main bearings look okay. So it doesn't look like oil starvation. We, I feel like this is a little excessive, but I'm gonna do some research to see if that's excessive or not. Um, On every for, single one. Yeah, for an engine that has like less than 10 miles. But I think this is my fault because when I, when I was bolting down the connecting rods, uh, Dennis caught it in the video. 
saying, yeah, I think I'm, you did I'm, way I'm, too much talking. I'm watching Daniel's video, I'm like, bro, I don't think you need to put in that much effort tightening the rods. Yeah, I read online somewhere where it said, I think, 45 newton meters and then 90 degrees. And I was like, that sounds way too... So, so I, I texted uh, Diesel Pump UK, the um, person that makes these rods, the performance rods, and he said that over tightening uh, that they're way over tightened i tested the torque it was 115 newton meters they're supposed to be 75 newton meters but i tested it it was 115 newton meters to take them off and and then um he said that what can what can happen if they're over tightened is that the bolts can get ruined and and or they can oval the connecting rods so i'm assuming that uh it ended up just ovaling them because the the cap side of the bearings are like almost pristine condition like beautiful but for some reason it's just rubbing up against the top of the I mean, piston honestly it's good that it snagged the bearing and pushed it on the bottom so that the piston didn't actually go all the way to the top because if it was the other way it would have oh yeah the against the cylinder head Oh, and it yeah. could have hit the valves and destroyed the yeah the ruined a lot more it could have been catastrophic yeah we would have uh not had fun on the road we would have been seeing a lot more it would just probably seize the engine and locked up the tires no no i would just clutch it out um uh, whatever you just clutch it out i mean you're you're good but the main bearings look perfect except for uh, a little bit of like uh, think, rubbing on yeah, these. Yeah, I think this one started. These two right here started, but, but I think that's because of what was happening with. Yeah. With the other than that, the other ones look perfect. So I think we'll end up just keeping these main rods, but probably most likely con buying yeah, connect new, all uh, new rod rod main rod rod, ba rod, bearings. <laughs> rod bearings. Yeah. Yeah, all new rod bearings and another crank. Uh, yeah. Don't feel comfortable if, if that crank is the same as the 603 crank. Funny thing. Come here, man. Um, the pulley welded itself on. Yeah. It was actually extremely difficult to get the pulley off. Yeah. It totally started welding itself to the. to the. On An interesting part, it's on, on both sides where the keyways are. You can see the, the stock keyway started really eating itself in there on both sides of it. And then on the, the pin, like where I drilled and pinned it, you can see it's starting to eat itself there too, which is interesting why it's only doing it in that spot. So we were thinking of sending this machine shop, but hopefully we can find another crank instead. So we wrote to the, the rod builder, Diesel Pump UK, to see what's his take on what happened and what we should do next. So we're waiting from him. He's probably sleeping right now. So once he replies, and then we'll be making decisions on what we're doing next. We, are we completely changing out rods? And, or are we going to just change one rod? I'm not sure. If or are we just going to leave this engine and then use the burnt engine, put the turbo and manifold build, on? Or we just push this one aside and build another engine. Yeah. Use that engine and... Um, use that one for race week. Use that one for race week and then come back and then maybe do something with this yeah. one. Or buy some AliExpress rods. AliExpress rods, I like that idea. Yeah. Instead of spending $1,400, spend $400. <laughs> with shipping <laughs> included. <laughs> so, we'll do, we'll do some research. So, we got an email back from uh, Luke at Diesel Pump UK. He said that a 603 crank will actually fit the 606, which is really good for us because we can, we, ha we have plenty of those laying around, rotting away. So, got to dig one out of the dirt, clean it up with some diesel, and then uh, slap it to here, as well as the rod. He said that, uh, replace the rod, and it should be fine. So I'm gonna order a rod, one singular rod, and then order just a new set of bearings to see uh, if that will fix the problem. We'll run it once at the track, and then we'll disassemble it and see how the bearings are. So a lot of people were writing comments saying that we over rev the engine and that the diesels don't handle the manual like that. My experience is I've had a 606 with a possessed transmission where it would be going like 80 miles an hour, basically fourth gear going fourth gear and then shift into second and redline it heck of hard. It was a 7223, a stock SDL transmission. It was just some valve body issues. Yeah. But, but totally, you're driving and out of nowhere, it just. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was just 
good. And then when you get stuck in second gear, only allow you to go like 45 miles an hour. So you're basically redlining it the entire way just to keep up with traffic. I know, I've driven it before like that, and it's like you're just driving <laughs> not to be in everybody's way. Yeah. You're just redlining second gear for like minutes at a time. Yeah, hoping it would shift into like at least third. And that engine, right till this day, still goes really hard. It, it just pulls so good, it runs really smooth, and um, still a great tra it's still a great engine. So definitely not any, not over revving it, which is only five and a half thousand RPM. Yeah. If if uh, money shifted, it was a very light money shift because it was a very slow one. So probably only back to the RPM that it was at. We're assuming that it was my error while uh, installing these rods. I way over tightened them past the preferred torque spec. And what the builder said was that they can oval the rods. So I'm assuming that the rods oval and then gave enough space for the bearing to just slip right onto the other one. I don't know if it just gave enough space. I think it just started grabbing it and started knocking it over, 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 oh, over, maybe. over, 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 and then it finally made its way there. But very strong rod. I was super surprised that the rod, mm -hmm. direct contact with the crank with about like over 40 PSI of boost, yeah. completely survived and didn't put a hole in the block. That yeah. was pretty awesome. That's, That's good. a strong rod. And it's really good for us now we don't want to get a new block. Yeah, and so one, so you could tell there wasn't um, oil salvation because everything else was completely perfectly fine mm -hmm. except just one rod, one rod bearing. Everything else is completely fine. All the bearings are completely fine. So some people are suggesting to move uh, to get the rear sump. We're actually going to test that to see if it's necessary. We haven't found that to be necessary in their other, yeah, in our other 603 system. or 606 builds that, you know, the super turbo ones that pull really hard. I've never had it. Um, even the SDL, your yeah. SDL, when it's under boost, it climbs, it pulls the front end up so high and it tilts the car back so much and the oil pressure is still good. I mean, but it's still doing that even a year later, even longer. It's like it's, a no, year it's and a half. It's like about, yeah, yeah almost so two years. Half. It's oh, like geez. a year and a half to two years of that car just consistently spooling and pulling with zero issues. Actually, yeah, that, that, that 606 that you had, your first one that you mm -hmm. in, in the SDL, that thing was awesome and it's still awesome. It's flawless and still- And still zero working. supporting mods, no valve springs, no crank pin, nothing just injection pump and turbo and zero problem so like and subscribe because it really helps you to find more people that like these old turbo diesel mercedes builds so we'll see you next time god bless you guys god bless america have a good night